and uh, which controls the entire universe. <clears throat> so when we uh, talk of breath, can we look at the request all of you to be on silent mode? Uh, Sanchita ji, if you're here, uh, kindly you provide me with mute, uh, mute option, mute option to uh, co-host option so that uh, I can mute anybody who is unmuted by mistake. <clears throat> so when we look at our uh, parts of the body, we get to know that uh, with the head, we are always in the past, uh, the uh, regrets or uh, this thing. Uh, whenever uh, we are uh, thinking of what's going to happen, uh, we are using our head uh, to connect with the future anxieties and the both the pros and the cons of the uh, activity in front of us. Whereas when it comes to the heart, it is filled with past regrets. It's uh, continuously on uh, what happened in the past and how grieving it was or how joyful it was and how it was a satsang and how it turned out to be a tragedy. So we are always on a mix and match mode. And then when it comes to our breath, that is the only thing which keeps us in the present. The fresh air connected with the elements around us constantly detoxifying us and energizing us. So that is the magic that breath does to us. And this breath at the physical level or at the uh, gross level, at the stola level, transforms into life force, the prana, the pranic energy in our uh, subtle body and en uh, energizes the subtle life force, which keeps our entire nama and rupa in this format with the uh, Atma and the Paramatma connected. Okay, so that is what breath is about. Now that um, we have invoked breath using the uh, single line prayer, now let's call upon that breath to take care of us with this prayer. Uh, the breath which controls not only us, but the entire universe, let it take care of us. Who is the best caretaker for all of us? Our mother, right? So exactly like our mother, we pray upon uh, uh, to the breath and to the uh, life force to um, protect us from everything in this world and provide us with all that we need. So neck and back straight, elbows relaxed, shoulders relaxed, normal breathing, observe your breath, observe the warm air entering your nostrils, observe it fixing in the, fixing itself in the heart, oxygenating it, carrying that prana shakti around, infusing oxygen, at every cellular level, cellular respiration takes place, collects all the toxins to be exhaled through our nostrils. As it enters, feel the cold air and as it exhales, exits our body, feel it becoming warm and laden, throwing out all the toxins, leaving us revitalized. Observe every breath of yours, observe every cell of yours, as I chant the shloka, request all of you to be on mute, neck and back straight, elbows relaxed, shoulders relaxed, join your palms above your head, aligning your aura, bring the palms down to your Agnya Chakra, aligning your left and right cerebral energies, gently bring down the palm to your Anahata Chakra, heart chakra, aligning your practical emotional dimensions, aligning with your breath, as you stay with your breath, I'll chant the shloka. Om Pranasyedam Vashe Sarvam Triti Veyat Pratishtitam Mateva Putran Raksasva Shri Shcha Pragnyam Chavidehi Naiti Om Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyona Maha Hari Hiyo. Continue with eyes closed. Rub your palms. Stop your face. Bring the palm in front of you. Open your eyes into your palm. Karamadhyay, karamuledu. Apply the energy all over your body. And let's connect. <clears throat> So whatever exists in this world runs to a life force, whether it is a 
uh, <clears throat> living or non-living thing. So whether it is a moving or a non-moving uh, in act, uh, object. So every object is considered to be a life form in our scriptures. They are only chara or achara, chara chara. Okay, stavara jangama, the one which stays in a place, the other which are moving. So chara means moving and achara means the non-moving. Okay, so along with that, we're going to work with our prana. Prana is nothing but pra means existing from before. Ana means atom or to breathe. Both of them mean ana. So body is the machine where prana is the energy which runs this machine. Okay, so... <clears throat> This will be an interactive session. So the more, more number of people on video, that will be uh, great. So um, <clears throat> from where did prana emerge in each one of us? Anybody? So prana is the vital force, life force, which emerged into this universe along with the Big Bang. So all of you are aware of how the universe uh, started off how the uh, universe is um, from a single cell, from the single Sarvagna Bija. So how this universe, uh, we have discussed elaborately in the mudra session earlier, and the analogy of a seed and the manifestation of the seed into a tree and uh, uh, the branches, the flowers, the fruits, and a seed within every fruit. So is our um, a life force. It started off from the seed of the universe, Uh, can anyone hear me? No, she got dropped off from the no. call. Okay, I thought there is some problem at my end. That's why.
Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So like we saw, the uh, prana uh, is uh, when the uh, seed of the universe uh, launched itself and uh, sprouted, the Big Bang happened as per uh, the uh, physics or the uh, astronomical science. And our scriptures went on to say that the uh, Deepa Jyotir or the Atma Jyoti and the light, heat and sound and the uh, heat in everybody along with the sound, the Omkara Tattva, the vibration in the universe, the cosmic vibration, they all emerged. And after that to emerge were the Panchamaha Bhutas. So this Omkara Tattva is the, as we chant Omkara, we are able to connect with the cosmic vibration. And along with the light, we become the Tejas. Our Ojas increases with the heat in the body and our Tejas increases the light in the body. And so we become, as the Tejas increases even more, our aura enhances. So this pranic energy, the subtle aspect is what goes. So the more and more the breath and the mind being connected, the breath enhances the mind aspect. And as you focus more on your breath, you are able, you will be able to enhance your um, the uh, aura. And to that extent, uh, the siddhis and other mental powers can be attained. And that is where our journey is actually. And with uh, pranayama, this is what you will be able to um, uh, excel and improve um, and uh, upgrade your dimensions okay so as we are already aware what happens uh, as we are already aware what happens whenever you are uh, re, um, entering a place with uh, you know high vibration like you enter a road and there's a party happening you know you've been invited even though there are no lights or um, uh, there are no uh, sound coming out and you uh, walk up to the gate still you can get that vibe of you know even you are excited within yourself and the vibrations from inside of all the happy moments there uh, you'll be able to uh, gather that is the place and you know when to where to enter now at the same time if you enter a, a lane you pass by a lane where uh, somebody is uh, uh, unwell or uh, moaning okay a moaning is happening then how do you feel as you pass by itself you know something is wrong i get a wrong vibe in this place i should ask if there's somebody something is wrong if i can help in any way okay so that kind of a vibration so every prana every breath reveals your uh, mind dimensions to the atmosphere around that is why when you keep a smile in spite of all your challenges when you keep your smile on automatically people get the right vibes and they are also able to handle their challenges of their own right so, so uh, that is why pranayama is very important and uh, pranayama works in the pancha koshas anybody knows what the pancha koshas are Yes, ma'am. Mano Maya Kosha, uh, Prana Maya Kosha, uh, Vignana Maya Kosha, Anna Maya Kosha, and Ananda Maya Kosha. But a uh, little bit up and down, yeah. I said. No, that no, is no. Anna Maya Kosha. Yeah, no worries. Perfect. So the body has got Sharira Traya, that is the gross body, the Stula Sharira. Then you have the Sukshma Sharira and Karana Sharira. The Pancha Koshas are uh, according to the uh, Sharira. So if you are in the Stula Sharira, it is the Anamaya Kosha, well, uh, uh, you know what, uh, built with the uh, food from earth. Okay, which goes on to enhance us. And then you have the uh, Stula Sharira. The Stula Sharira, that is the subtle body. Your gross body is your Nama and Rupa. The Stula Sharira, nobody can see your respiratory body, right? The breathing body. And then you have the uh, mind uh, dimension. That is the Manonmaya Kosha, where interaction with the uh, external world using your sense of organs. You see a rose, you see a person, you see a 
animal, uh, you see a child, you see a plant, you see a tree, all of these interactions with your mind and the external world happening through the Panchendriyas is the Manon Maya Kosha and then the database, the Vijnana Maya Kosha, the intellect, intellectual uh, process that takes place, which reveals to you who that person is, what that plant is or what that flower is. Okay, uh, all these are revealed by the uh, your um, storehouse or your database in the Vijnana Maya Kosha. So the Manon, uh, the Prana Maya Kosha, the breath apparatus, right from breathing, the air you can't see, the apparatus you can't see, the exchange of gases you cannot see, that is in the Prana Maya Kosha, then leads to Manon Maya Kosha, the mind dimension, and then you have Vijnana Maya Kosha, which is your intellectual or the database. And these three are in the Sukshma uh, sharira and then you have the karana sharira what is your karana what grounds are you uh, here uh, your how are you born here what is responsible for your birth here anybody feel free it's like you go back to school days it's okay if you're right or wrong just what you think about it how are you born The single cell theory, right? So um, the two cells, your the uh, father's uh, genes and the mother's genes, the father's sperm and the mother's ova, two different cells come together, merge to become a single cell, right? And that single cell manifests into trillions of cells. Each cell carries uh, the, um, uh, they uh, communicate to each other with oats, the electricity. And so when you, and you become trillions of cells. So imagine trillions of oats from every cell, there is a uh, electric uh, stimulation or an electric uh, wave uh, released and then the trillions of uh, cells carry that many uh, volts of uh, electricity and so you are a shining bulb to all others when you are smiling on your best mode. Okay, so this becomes the current. Just like how the seed of the universe became the, the God particle, which has been experimented in Switzerland. I'm not going in depth. We'll cover it in Mudra session. So that when we, uh, which we started off from the Sarvagna Bija in the Hiranya Garba, similarly, this single cell from the parents uh, in the womb of the mother translated into this trillions of cells after our birth. Okay. So we, that Karana, that is the Karana, just like how the Sarvagna Bija is the Karana for the universe. This single cell, your single cell is the Karana for the entire Sharira, which is known as the Karana Sharira. And tell me what is the dimension or what is the attitude or attribute characteristic of that single cell from which you have manifested? All of you, please participate quickly. We'll take this forward. Ma'am, your voice is not coming properly. It is breaking and you're too it... fast. Okay. Uh, is it for everyone? Can't you hear me? Yes, yes ma'am. It is just even going in fact. We did not even hear the question too now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sorry. I said, uh, am I audible now? Ma'am, it's not the audible oh. audibility. It is your voice is just coming in the patches. Okay, now is it better? Yes, we'll let you better. Ma'am, but the speed is too high, ma'am. Please. It's just the starting. As we go forward, uh, you'll be able to uh, adjust to the speed. Does everyone feel the same way? Ma'am, uh, we are so excited and uh, we can see 100 times excitement in you to teach us the subject wholly. But ma'am, please understand the speed has to be slow. Okay. So we've just covered the three shariras, the panch. I will need more days then. Okay. She's given me only two days for theory and practical is uh, what is uh, uh, the three days. Anyway, let's uh, uh, celebrate this together. So the pancha koshas you understood? The two cells, did you understand? Okay. Uh, one second. Yeah, so uh, the single cell, Karana Sharira also you understood. Now, that Karana Sharira, what is the attribute? Or what is the attribute or characteristic of that single cell? The single cell from which you were born. Just think, whatever comes to your mind. 
what do you think was the nature of that cell <clears throat> it will have the characteristics of both the parents ma'am yeah but then what does that cell do that cell what does a seed do how is a seed it has been uh, um, the multiplication process will happen in that cell only. Terminate, ma'am. Okay. Multiplication happens. But what is the quality? What do you tell? What is the nature of that seed? What do you think is the seed's nature? Jumpy, happy, excited, talkative. What do you think? Is that your response? You are gone into that trillions of cells from that single cell. That single cell had to be nurtured in the mother's womb to grow into trillions of cells. It was just lying there dormant, right? It, that is why it is called the such chit anand state, where it was totally existing, totally existing with all the. It didn't know that it was carrying all the um, uh, the branches, the leaves, the flowers, the fruits. Everything is inside that seed. So it was just dormant, waiting to manifest. Similarly, that seed uh, had uh, the uh, con uh, knowledge that it is capable of becoming a tree and it is also in an ananda state. It is also in an ananda state that is no, no, no happiness, no sorrow. It was in a balanced, equipoised state. So that state, the ananda doesn't mean happiness alone. It means that equipoised. So when you are in a balanced thought mode, so it is in that kind of a state and that is what is expected in every cell in your body. If every cell in your body carries these attributes, so what happens is you will be in good health all the time. So if you can relate to that single cell every day when you sleep and then manifest in the morning into trillions of cells, immediately any roga, any vyadi, any disease in your body will vanish because it will take you back to that original state and become get that Sachit Anand mode and then it um, manifests to the universe in the morning again. Okay. So here we also learn that food is not only replenishment for the physical body, even air and water constitute food. So where is your prana? I request more videos, please. Where is your prana? Throughout the body, madam. Throughout the body, wonderful. Anybody else wants to add to it? <clears throat> so, at every cellular level, we have seen in the mudra session how macrocosm and microcosm are one and the same. So, the two substratum uh, uh, th um, uh, substances that lie to the entire framework is your um, uh, time and space uh, concept, the akasha and the prana concept. The prana, prana is the first to emerge. And so this world, because of the five elements, after the uh, heat, light, and sound aspect, when the five elements manifested, the world is known as prapancha. Every uh, aspect in this body, pra means every aspect in this universe carries the pancha tattva. So the world is known as prapancha. And since we are all running to this force, life force, this physical body, which is a machine, runs to a life force called prana. All of us are called prani. Okay. So that is why every aspect is called as the uh, prani. And uh, <clears throat> where is the prana in the body? Every cell in the body, there is prana. Okay, so every single cell is running to this energy level and put together organs, put together tissues and then the entire body is also carrying the prana aspect. Okay, <clears throat> then you have prana in individuals and you have prana when you come together as a group, right? Together they say we are two bodies, one prana. Why, right? That kind of a bonding they have. So, similarly, if you have control over your prana, you can have control over every other prana. So, when you have control over your prana, you have control over your mind. And when you have control over your mind, you will be in a position to control the prana and the mind all around you. Okay. So, the individual prana, what is the prana within you and the prana within me? Are they different? The prana within you, if I remove it and put it in a bottle and I put remove my prana and put it in another bottle, are they different? They are, are they same, different? madam. 
they are the same. So your prana, only the nama rupa is different. The prana or the atma remain the same. That which emerged from the divine, it is the same for all of us. Okay. And so the uh, is the individual prana, samashti is the put together prana, the uh, some total prana can also be controlled if you are able to control your prana. Okay, so now let's explore uh, a few prana. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's start with a few pranayama. How is what is normal breathing? So what is a uh, uh, proper breathing? How do you breathe when you inhale? What happens to your abdomen? All of you, put your left hand on your abdomen. Observe. Goes out. Expands. When okay. You Wonderful. So the abdomen expands when you inhale. Is that right for everyone? Yeah. Okay. And when you exhale? Abdomen shrinks. Um, shrinks. So what is actually happening? What do you think is happening when you inhale? The chest expands and pushes the stomach out. Wonderful. So the chest expands and then the lungs are, uh, uh, you know, uh, it can be uh, broken up into three parts. So the trisection of your lungs, the lower lungs, the middle lungs and the upper lungs. So the entire uh, uh, trisection of your lungs get filled. Only then it is full breathing. When it, that kind of a breathing happens, the entire lungs get filled and the diaphragm gets pushed down. And when the diaphragm gets pushed down, the abdomen gets pushed out. Okay. So don't, um, uh, usually people think push your abdomen out, make it like a balloon. It doesn't fill air in your abdomen level or your stomach level. The air, when you inhale through your nose, fills your lung. And like Ashwini ji shared, it goes and pushes the abdomen out. Okay. So let's start with uh, <clears throat> abdominal breathing. So just simple breathing. Put your left hand on your stomach on your abdomen region, on your navel, with your left hand, right hand in Gyan Mudra, index finger and thumb uh, tips joining. Normal breathing, inhale, inhale some more, inhale some more, inhale fully, four stages of inhalation. Observe the lungs fully filled, abdomen pushed out, hold, hold, hold. Start exhaling, shrinking your abdomen. In exhale, exhale some more, chest contracts, exhale some more, abdomen contracts, exhale completely, navel to spine and gently start inhaling. Okay, so this is your abdominal breathing. We have seen children uh, in uh, experiencing abdominal breathing where their uh, stomach comes and goes, uh, comes up and because their lungs are not fully formed as soon as they are born. Okay, so that is how it works. Now, let's try uh, Mukhadhauti. Okay, so <clears throat> Mukhadhauti is throwing out the toxins. So, before any pranayama, in fact, every one hour you should try this. This is known as Mukhadhauti. Mukhadhauti means throwing out of the toxins in the body. Okay, Let, first normal breathing for Mukhadhauti. Inhale. Inhale some more. Inhale fully. Exhale with a ha sound. Exhale through your mouth. Ah. nose and mouth so inhale as if you're smelling flowers how do you do it with closed eyes inhale smell the flowers smile on the face smell the flowers breathe in fully hold the smell within hold, hold. exhale through your mouth blowing out the candles on the cake ah. Completely exhale. Okay. So this is known as Mukhadauti, where you throw out toxins and this helps relax your body even more. Okay. Then we will try. We will try a double breathing technique <clears throat> after Mukhadauti, where in double breathing you're doing similarly, where you forcefully inhale in the first time, short inhalation, forceful short in a second long inhalation. Okay, and then you hold and tense your body. So let's do it together. Inhale, inhale fully. 
Hold and tense till you vibrate. Hold and tense. Hold and tense tightly. Every muscle in your body, legs. Hold and tense. And exhale forcefully through your mouth. And relax your body. One more time. Inhale, short inhalation forcefully. Ma'am, are we exhaling through the mouth or the nose here? In Both double together. Breathing? How uh, uh, it's actually through the mouth with the ha sound. If there is some exhalation happening through the nose, perfectly all right. Okay, so there's no okay. forceful rule here. We are only becoming uh, acclimatizing ourselves with our breath. We have lost connect with our breath, so let's reconnect ourselves to the breath. So inhale forcefully, short, forcefully long. Tighten, 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 tighten. Exhale short forcefully, exhale long forcefully together. One more round for practice. Inhale. Inhale forcefully, second round. Hold tight, hold tight. Hold every muscle tight. Exhale forcefully. Relax your body. Did that help? Okay. Now let's move on to another pranayam. This also you can do 5 to 10 times. Next pranayam we will practice Plavani pranayam. A very important pranayam when there is seasonal change. So twice in a year. Immediately after winter when Vasanta Ritu is starting. And <clears throat> again uh, during uh, onset of winter. Deepavali time. Uh, after Navaratri, Plavani Pranaya. Uh, besides these two seasons, whenever you feel you have digestive disorders or bad breath, you can practice Plavani Pranaya. It is uh, similar uh, as uh, our double breathing. So we are going to do it with a holding. Okay. So hold your knees with your hand. Inhale. Inhale some more. Inhale some more. Inhale fully, hold, hold, hold as much as possible. Don't wait for the count, hold as long as possible. And when you're ready, bend forward, tongue out with the ha sound. <laughs> Exhale with the ha sound, with the tongue out. Second round, this will throw out all the toxins from every part of your body, every cell in your body. Second round, inhale, inhale some more. Inhale fully. Abdomen, chest, every aspect in your body expanded. Clavicular part also expanded. The neck region. Hold, 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 hold. When you're ready, bend forward. Out, exhale through your mouth. Shrinking your body fully. Okay? Any questions? Is Ruchika ji here? In Plavani, uh, when you bend forward, you, we have to exhale with our tongue forward, did you say? Yeah, tongue, tongue out. Out, out. Yeah. 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 So the bad breath gets thrown out. Okay. Oh. So Ruchika ji is here? Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Uh, is it uh, good, your pace? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now uh, the um, next level, where do you think breathing happens? So we saw how we breathe. We saw the uh, three parts of the lung. How do you think, uh, where do you think the breathing happens? Whatever we breathe. In the lungs. In the middle part of the lungs, ma'am. Lungs, okay. Anybody else? In every part of the body. It starts yeah. from the nose, from the entrance of the nose. Okay, Sudhana Niji, yes. Breathing happens in every cell of the body. Yes. Wonderful, every cell. So breathing happens throughout the body. In fact, when we, have, I told you, we have to go back to school days. So when we look at a frog, we know how it breathes. Skin breathing, cutaneous breathing, pulmonary breathing, gill breathing. So we have so many types of breathing. Even in our uh, body, uh, breathing happens, the skin breathes. 
doesn't our uh, beautician always say your skin is breathing don't rub your uh, uh, moisturizer too much it will clog the pores right so the skin also breathes your every cell i just now said cellular respiration happens as you're breathing your nose is breathing in and out the exchange of gases happen in the lungs fixation of oxygen happens in the uh, blood and then the circulation mode every cell exchanges toxins and uh, takes in energy through the oxygen pigmentation and and throws out the toxins and with every cell breathes in this process and breathing how long does it run for until you die <laughs> so that is something which happens 24 hours 365 days and it happens both on voluntary level and involuntary level right so that is the beauty of breathing so breathing happens in every cell even during sleep we are supposed to finish eating at what time Quickly, so it will be your knowledge exchange. Six thirty four seven thirty. Yes. Why? Why? Uh, as the sun goes down, your energy and everything, you are supposed to finish all your activities so that your the rest of the biological clock starts working after that. There, there is uh, every organ in the body needs a shutdown. Okay, every aspect in this body has to be on a silent mode on a switch off mode and only breathing will continue okay that is a very uh, interesting aspect that is uh, only your breathing happens and all, all the other uh, organs have shut down get what is happening when you're sleeping what how do you wake up in the morning when you had a very good night's rest fresh fresh very, fresh, very fresh, ma'am. Very, very fresh, energized, right? It is exactly like your mobile. What happens? Your mobile, uh, when it is losing charge, you plug it, right? So, you plug it to the uh, uh, your uh, <clears throat> power supply and you recharge it. Similarly, when you shut down, when you sleep in the night, you are completely switched off to this entire world and you are in a different zone, plugging yourself to that original Sarvagna Bija where you started from. Where is the Sarvagna Bija? Or where is the Bija, seed of the universe? Where is the seed of the universe? All around us. Hmm? Within you, every fruit, we are all fruits of the creation. And every fruit carries the seed, right? From where it emerged. So you are plugging yourself to your the, the source, the creator within you because you are carrying the same seed. And that charging happens in that zone where you are completely switched off. Are you aware where you are? How many ever times if you are watching TV and the TV remote is in your hand and you have already dozed off. Can you hear the TV after you have dozed off? No. 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 So, but where are you? You are there. The TV was on, you were watching the TV until some time and after that when you were uh, in the sleep mode, everything is switched off. So where were you? Touching base with the source, recharging yourself and that source is very important uh, for your <clears throat> waking up in the morning back to this universe. That is that kind of switch off. So these are known as when you are awake, it is known as Jagrit Stiti. When you are slowly getting into sleep mode, you can hear people, but you can't work, you can't answer. That is the Swapna mode. The If you read the sleep cycle, you will get a good idea how you drift into the REM, rapid eye movement, the sleep mode or the dream mode. And from the dream mode, you reach a deep sleep state, which is known as alpha level, beta level. So these are the, and in our scriptures, it is called the Shishupti, Jagrat Stiti, uh, Swapna Stiti, Swapna Avastha and your uh, Shishupti state. In the Shishupti state, you touch base, you reconnect with your source. Just like how your mobile gets its source of energy, we get our source of energy. That is possible only when you are sleeping. And that recharging or re-energizing happens only when you are in a complete shutdown and the prana works. And that prana is so beautiful, it connects to the original or the source prana, recharges itself and comes back, awakes, uh, wakes up early in the morning to uh, greet this world in its back to its form. Okay, this is known as Nitya Pralaya, where you have no idea where you were there, where you were, what you were doing, what you were doing, only your breath or your breath 
was um, pulsing and that pulsation connected with the universal pulsation and you could recharge yourself. I'm repeating myself so that uh, it sounds a bit slower. So uh, this energizing yourself. So that is how the Panchamaha Bhutas are uh, replenished in your body every day. Panchamaha Bhutas, when you look at Prithvi, we eat food from the soil to enhance the Prithvi within the body. Prithvi is your earth element. The next element is Jala Tattva or the Varuna Tattva or the fluid or the water element, which is again replenished using... What is it that helps? Yes. Water. Food. All fluid foods. Okay. Water, juice. Okay. Your rasam, your payasam. Uh, your kheer, all of that is your um, uh, food intake, uh, water intake, fluid intake to enhance the water body, the water element in your body. Next is your fire. How do you think fire gets recharged? Energy from the food source that you have consumed. That helps food source or food that you take is food, actually food. earth element. It comes from earth, goes to this earth. Your fire element comes from what you think. That is why think right. The uh, Keep your thoughts pure is important because fire elements come from firing your intellect. Okay. And that is where the recharge of fire happens. When you do a good satsang interaction, how do you feel? Fully charged, right? And then you are uh, able to launch in your uh, next task with uh, a new dimension. Similarly, next is your Vayu. Vayu is the uh, breathing apparatus in your body, air that you take from the uh, universe and replenish yourself. Air recharge happens. And finally, space recharge. How do you think space recharge happens? By doing Upuasa, madam. Space recharge happens in your sleep. In your deep sleep state, you transcend space and time. You connect with space. That is what the time and space construct as defined by the physicist. You touch base there. Even in uh, our um, uh, sleep cycle, the same thing is taught. That when you can transcend into that space, deep sleep state, you are switched off to this world and you have recharged your space element in your body. So the entire body wakes up in the morning fully recharged. The best part is to attain the next level, next dimension after. Jagrat, Swapna and Shushupti is your Turya and Turya Atita state. So the Turya state is where it is detached. Okay, That detached is possible only when you can attain the alpha level, beta level, the deep sleep state even when you are awake. So let me give an example for this. When you are awake, when your deep sleep state, in deep sleep state, if there is a snake that goes by, okay, there's a snake that goes by. Do you feel it? Do you see it? No. No, no. No. So the uh, trick question by Ramana Maharishi is in your awake, can you hold that stance, that kind of a, um, approach of not reacting when you see a snake when you are awake, the deep sleep state, that kind of a nature, if you can hold even when you are awake, then you have attained a uh, Turiya state. You are able to transcend your. Uh, Connection with the interaction with the external world. Nothing in this world brings a reaction within you. How was the single cell? Now you will be able to connect to that thought process. How was that single cell when you were born? Before you were born in your uh, mother's womb, it was a single cell. No jumping, no. It wasn't samadhi state. Okay, that samadhi state, if you can spread to every state using your breath, then imagine there will be, it will be a disease-free state. It will be your Satchit Anand state. And imagine if every cell in your body is vibrating with that kind of an energy, how beautiful this uh, cosmic connect will become. And how wonderfully you will be delivering seva to this world. So that is what pranayama through our session we are trying to attain. Okay. So, but we need to know the physical aspect, psychological aspect and the um, uh, spiritual aspect. That is where the journey is today and tomorrow. Okay, so now we know every aspect in this body is uh, breathing, every cell is breathing, even the stones are breathing, only thing they are known as chara, achara, moving and non-moving, there is no concept of living and non-living in scriptures, so and breath is a powerful tool to calm the mind, we saw how it can work, even during our deep sleep state, it is still working, it is the only dimension which carries us beyond our levels and brings back to our levels. 
right? So it takes us, holds our hand beautifully to transcend this mind, transcend this earth, connect with the divine and awaken the divine within and become one with it all through that period of deep sleep. And when you wake up, you're fully charged and energized and ready the next day. And everything comes back to you, okay? You're not lost. You come. Everything comes back to you. It's only breath which helps transcend. And that is the only activity that happens both voluntarily and involuntarily, okay? So that is automatic breathing, autonomic breathing or the metabolic breathing, which is, and then you have, which is involuntarily happening. And another is the, where you control, inhale two, three, four, you're able to control. You're not uh, letting it do it on its own. You're breathing and breathing some more with consciousness. That happens in a different format. So they have a different pathway attached to it. So how do we breathe? Let's explore that. Our brain is trisected, uh, even by sign, uh, the uh, doctors. They have the brain, hind brain concept, the mid brain concept, and the fore brain concept. Okay, so the, the hind brain is all about reptilian brain. Okay, so the reptilian brain works on our instinct, survival instinct. The, they don't have a mind of their own. Reptiles live to eat and to uh, breathe. Okay, so other they just the daily routine: eat, sleep, eat, sleep, breathe. So this is the only work they have. So, but they are part of the food chain, very necessary. So their uh, instinct is only to live. So they are not threatened. You even a snake. You observe the um, uh, herpetologists say: as long as they are not scared, they will not harm you. You move aside, they will move aside. You stay still, they stay still. Okay, so that kind of a <clears throat> uh, reptilian instinct happens. So. This hind brain works on survival aspect. So the mind, even though I'm talking continuously, the breathing continues to happen in between. For a singer who sings continuously for three hours, does he run out of breath? Does he say, wait, wait, all of you, side instruments stay, accompanying instruments, wait, I have to catch my breath and then I will continue, you also continue. No, it is on a continuous activity, but the breathing happens and he is connected to some other dimension, which is music. Right. So that is how we will learn to control our breath, harness our breath and elevate our dimensions for now as we are listening or as we are watching the session as I am talking, we are all on a reptilian mode where we are living, surviving for survival purposes. We are breathing and inhaling and exhaling. Then let's move on to the midbrain. The mid the midbrain, the midbrain works along with the mammalian concept. Okay, the mammalian uh, uh, instincts of breathing. What are the, how does a mammalian, how is a mammalian different from a reptilian? Anybody? Back to school days. Smile on the face. Quickly. Mammal gives birth to uh, young ones, not lay eggs. Correct. So reptiles lay eggs and mammalians uh, give birth. So the mammalians are driven by emotions and there are six enemies to mammals, right? For every mammal, six emotional enemies, okay? They are Ari, Shad, Vargas. Ari means enemy. Shad means six. Vargas means the emotions or types. So they are the, uh, anybody knows? What are the uh, six? Kama, Krodha, Loba, Moha, Madha, Wonderful. K, K, L, M, M, M. Two Ks, one L, triple M. So, Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Madha, Matsarya. The jealousy as with the uh, desire, the anger, the greed, okay? Uh, infatuation and um, kind of a um, drive and agitation. And then finally, Matsarya, jealousy. All these six contribute to the six Arishad Vargas, the six types of negative emotions, which has to be conquered. Similarly, on the positive side, the oxytocin, the bonding hormone brings attachment. You have my mamakara coming in, ahankara, mamakara. Ahankara is all about I, I, I. Mamakara is all about mine, mine, mine. What is mine? Uh, mine is your uh, concept of my body, my family, my possessions, my profession. So my belongings. Okay, all of these, my possessions, my belongings come under the same category. My journey. So all these are mamakara. Any attachment, you are putting a cage to yourself. Because you are born on this earth only to do seva. Anything on this earth, earth means water. Water means seva, right? 
if earth water was not there we wouldn't have chosen this planet or the design would not uh, the divine would not have designed this concept of survival of a human being or uh, the living beings on earth the water element uh, keep helps us survive there itself seva starts water is doing seva on this earth every aspect sun is doing seva the forests are doing seva the mountains are doing seva we are also supposed to do seva the seva can be categorized as seva for the self so somebody is helping us do seva for ourselves the who the cosmic uni, uh, uh, rhythm okay that drives us the similarly the cosmic rhythm drives us to do seva for everyone what can we do switch off our brain and allow the seva to happen so you don't um, identify or put cages. This is my family. I will do seva for them. This is my nation. I will do seva for my nation. You drop the boundaries. You drop the contours. And you just do seva. Seva for seva's sake. Automatically, you will be connected, elevating yourself to a higher dimension. Okay? But if you're doing seva with the uh, idea of uh, myself, none of them are wrong. Reptilian uh, hindbrain is not wrong. Midbrain is not wrong. They are all working within their dimension. Every person, if you want to evolve, the idea of uh, <coughs> uh, birth on this earth is evolution. If you want to evolve, then automatically you get into higher modes. And for that, this energy is going to help you. And that kind of a mammalian brain will bring attachments. Oxytocin is going to bring you attachments and lead you to uh, work with love, with fondness, with bonding, with your uh, immediate to start with, that is the platform you launch. As you're born to work, do seva for the near and dear and then spread the seva to a nation, then spread to the neighborhood, to the nation and back to the world. So that is how it brings up a multiplication. Constantly, the mind should be on seva mode. So that preparation of seva mode is tuned in here. Okay, so that is the mammalian concept. And then you have the homo sapien concept. The fontanel, when the child is born, this is very soft. So... This part is where the homo sapien brain works. The ashta siddhi, uh, all of that can be attained when you are doing voluntary breathing. So the involuntary breathing happens here. The emotional breathing. So when you are grieving or when you are in anxiety mode, your breathing is uh, very, very slow, very, very rugged and you're not breathing properly. And when you are uh, excited or when you are super uh, in the mammalian concept, you are happy, there is a birth in the family, you are celebrating, you are in a hyper mode, you are hyperventilating or you are excited and the breathing is rapid, you are jumpy. And uh, when it comes to for, uh, the cortex, frontal cortex, the breathing is very matured, the breathing is very balanced, everything is happening for a reason is the mindset. This too shall pass. Whether you are in a good moment, whether you are on a bad moment, you are able to identify both of them as a moment. And you can transcend that moment, equi uh, holding on to the equipoised mind where happiness and sorrow are on the same platform. Nothing matters. Nothing troubles you. Everything is going for a reason. And everything is happening as uh, you, uh, as the divine delivers. Okay, so that is how the acceptance and then when you do that with the surrendered attitude, automatically you transcend to higher levels and your siddhis because you have conquered your breath and by conquering your breath, you have conquered your mind. So by conquering your breath and your mind, how do you conquer your breath? Observing your breath. When you observe your breath, you can't observe anything else. And when you can't observe anything else, you are surrendered to your mind. Your mind is surrendered entirely to you in your hands, in your control. Automatically, your breath is yours. The universal breath is yours. You will be doing seva just by staying within yourself. What is swastha? <clears throat> what is swastha? Anybody? What do you mean when you say Is it healthy? Yeah, swastha means healthy, right? We all know swastha means being in good health, right? But swastha actually means staying within yourself. Swayam means stita. So you are stita. Sta means stay in yourself. Only then you are in swastha. Where is your mind all the time? I should get, I should close the door. I should switch off the light. I should uh, work with these speakers. I should check what is this in the laptop. I should listen to the session. I should make notes. All of these are where the mind is outside the body. And automatically, there is the distraction happening and you are not in swastha. You are in dis-ease. Ease, you are not in ease. When you are with yourself, there is nothing to do. Is there any reason to be angry with yourself? 
No. But the moment you open your eyes and you're closed and within yourself, you're like, aha, I can do whatever. I don't have to think about anything. No work to do. And then when you move on to another zone of thought process, automatically agitation or happiness will set in depending on what the thought is. And there is when your dimensions change where you are mind is not in swatha, in swayam. Then automatically you are not ease. At ease, this ease will set in. Okay, so that is the, how is your hand working for you? Hand is your part of your body, right? How does the hand work for you? Whenever you say write, it writes. Whenever you say you play the veena, it plays the veena. Whenever you say now it's time to play shuttle, let's play shuttle, it plays shuttle. Does it say I'm cranky now? Oh, you're asking me to write? I will draw, I will scratch. Does it say the hand is talking? It is part of you, it doesn't have a mind of its own. Similarly, um, uh, when you are uh, making it work all through the day and all through the night, today project pa, I have to work. Does the night say, no, no, I want eight hour work only. I won't work two days in a week, weekend off. So it's working for you 24 hours, 365 days at your order. Unless you say keep the hand, you stay still take rest for some time. Do you ever say take rest? You say take rest for yourself. Do you say hand, you work for me, I thank you. Let me take, I request you to take rest. So the moment you start doing that, every limb in your body, for that thanks and for that take rest sound itself, they will start healing, right? So this kind of a journey is ours. Even our mind should be completely surrendered to the divine because we are here in this Nama Rupa to deliver his orders. Your hand is delivering your orders. Your mind should deliver his orders or the energy, the Sarvagna Bija within you. You want to know what is your order? Do you want to know what is your role? Touch base with the Sarvagna Bija within you. Touch what is that Bija uh, planning for you to do. If you can go internalize your energies, automatically your journey in this world becomes a manifestation in front of you. And all that you need to deliver, you will deliver and be done with this. Uh, come, uh, this kaya, this physical body will be done with this journey if you are just able to touch base and connect with your own self and find out the real reason you are here. You will be uh, surprised that your mind is craving for things and that is working from the emotional aspect of the midbrain. The moment you shift to frontal brain, your mind will stop asking or attaching itself to anything. It will start working in sync with cosmic designs. So let's explore how voluntary breathing and involuntary breathing happens in the physical body. Okay. So this is the table with that. The uh, uh, medulla oblongata, the autonomic uh, breathing happens in the medulla oblongata, that is the hind brain, whereas the voluntary conscious breathing happens in the cerebral cortex. The breathing pattern, it depends. <clears throat> when it is the hind and the mid brain, automatically the emotion driven. So the throat, the heart and the stomach will overreact or will underreact given the circumstance, given the emotion and accordingly your breathing pattern will uh, change and with the breathing pattern change, every cell will not get nourished and in that process, mind will also get affected. Whereas when you do voluntary breathing, your diaphragmatic uh, muscles, your intercostal muscles, your clavicular muscles, they all get impacted and that is when you are completely observing how the breath is working at every dimension within your body. And then the descending pathway, the breath inhalation and the exhalation, the inhaling and the exhaling. There is a rising and a falling happening. That rhythmic breathing there is uh, is cancelled in the uh, involuntary breathing or the automatic or the autonomic breathing, the metabolic breathing. The spinal uh, column is impacted. Whereas in the <clears throat> uh, in the um, <clears throat> Uh, voluntary breathing where you consciously breathe the spinal column and it's uh, uh, is impacted but abolishes all the responses to the thought processes the thought processes are uh, activated with electrical stimulation and so the breath is the only switch available to switch you between yourself and swastha and the outer, outer uh, mind. So the conscious mind and the subconscious mind, we want to be with the subconscious mind amidst all activities. We want to let the snake go by even when we are away without reacting. That is possible only if you can stay with your subconscious mind 24 hours. Okay, if you stay with your conscious mind, you're going to be reacting and that will be uh, bringing you back to the Vyavaharika 
state to the from the paramarthika state so the paramarthika is the divine state which the subconscious mind is working and your conscious mind is constantly leading you away from it and your breath is what is responsible for the switch between the two any questions am i going very fast now is it okay the pace ma'am still very very fast ma'am so we will repeat i that is why i repeat sessions on my platform every uh, month so uh, we can attend multiple times and gather uh, the content so uh, it's very simple we just discussed how uh, breath is a uh, life force component how it is uh, housed and how it works with us uh, on a voluntary basis and on an involuntary basis and how the brain the three aspects of the brain are uh, relating us to the external world and the internal world okay so uh, and we experimented with uh, four types of pranayam already okay how much prana does each one of us have how much energy i should ask unlimited unlimited wonderful we don't have it but there, there is unlimited excellent how do you know you have unlimited <clears throat> no we don't we don't have it as human beings but <laughs> we have read that it is unlimited <laughs> you have it Why do you think? You think you run out of energy? Yeah, ma'am. Your voice is coming in pockets, ma'am. Your voice is coming in pockets. Ah, uh, do all of you? All of you have the same issue? At times it happens. Not yes, always. Ma'am. Um. So, ah, uh, how do you think? Um. Uh, how much energy does each one of us have? Um. it's not like we get tired some people get tired because it's the mind which pulls us down so what happens is uh, <clears throat> actually um, let, let's take example you you know people who are trekking you know how it is uh, when you start trekking you know you would have told your friend i'm going to trek halfway up you like why did i commit why did i announce to the world at least i could have got down i can't do any more i can't do any more and now i have to do it i have to go post pictures from the top the peak and then you continue or you force yourself because you come as a team and the team should not get yeah, stop the trekking halfway so you uh, continue with the trekking what happens is you trek all the way dragging yourself so what you should do in between is do the mukadauti example that uh, we uh, i suggested in the beginning you can do that and relax your body throw out the toxins and you will find new energy within yourself now that you have reached the top of the peak all that you want to do is hit the ground open your arms and look up at the sky which is closer than from the valley right so you like ha ah, i want to lie down here and then think about going down and then you want to take pictures and post on all your media handles twitter and instagram and facebook and highlight all that you've come and that is when you're not even you're just thinking about it and that is when your dear friend snake comes there so what do you do you say hey snake i'm very tired now please don't let's not discuss what to do next you wait and let me catch my breath and then we will decide what to do is that what we do no ma'am we get energy from nowhere <laughs> and we'll start running <laughs> correct so we start running where does the energy come from we get run we do run right right immediately so you have that flight fight mode where you either uh, fly away run away or you fight find a stick or something to hit the snake with or you freeze you don't know what to do you're stuck so the flight fight or freeze mode happens and you are uh, looking you have energy to do all of that so similarly when you are carrying uh, your provisions for the month and you are dragging your body thinking how much spent already and you're coming home and you just want to drop everything have that cup of coffee and lie down on the sofa watching your favorite serial 10 minute break for very tiring day and then your best friend from school meets you after bumps into you after 20 years how do you feel you say ella kano today i'm very tired i'll see you some other day again you're jumping um, right no ma'am yeah so again you are jumping you are excited you drop everything go give him a big hug come we will go to that uh, best part of the town for to the mall and uh, celebrate our reunion after so many years and catch up with all the years and uh, you launch into a joyous mood when you are watering if you are a garden enthusiast you water 10 flowers 10 pots and say i'm very tired tomorrow i'll water the next 10 pots 
you find energy to water all the 20 pots how many ever you have at home right you don't reduce even if one it's very tiring to go fetch water i you i won't do today you never say that you bring water water it and then you go and uh, take your kind of that is what fear anger when you're angry do you say when you're unwell and you're angry do you say no no i'm very unwell i can't shout at you now i will I have to conserve energy. I will not shout today. You will find, uh, um, uh, you will sit, sit up, shout, finish all your shouting and then go back to taking rest. Right? Especially when you come from the clinic, he is charging you twice, double the meter. You stop, you fight with him and then you finish and then you say, hard, I saved so much money. Right? So that kind, fear, anger, love, passion, all of these uh, brings out energy in you. You don't have to wait for energy to be launched using emotions. You have always running to 24 hours, 365 um, days, energy mode at all times. Anytime, anywhere called upon, you can be infused with energy only if you hold yourself with love. If love is uh, your breath and if seva is your motive, you will have no, um, no uh, energy fall at all. You feel like doing seva more and more. One more person comes, you don't say, I'm tired. Come, come, you also take and go. Come, come, you also take and go. Is That is the uh, way we uh, deliver to the universe, right? So that passion, make seva your passion, automatically you will be energized throughout the day. So that is how our journey should be. We are always carrying energy. And it is our perception which makes it wrong. What we think and works with our breath. So look at this beautiful uh, screen where it says, uh, one person is looking at a honeybee with joy. Oh my God, look at it sucking. Look at that uh, tentacles coming out, dipping itself into the um, uh, sepal of the flower, uh, digging out all the <clears throat> um, nectar and carrying it to the... It's a, The person is able to perceive the entire journey from the flower to the beehive and from the beehive to your shell, the honey uh, aspect, right? Similarly, but whereas if another person is looking at as an insect, a bee, oh my God, this bee, it might bring its friend, I might get stung, let me not alert it, let me stay safe, and you try to move away, that fear is going to release fear toxins, fear hormones within you, the happy person is going to have happy hormones, they are going to be, it depends on what kind of hormones you're releasing, and how it is going to tamper your mind and your energy levels. So hold on to the joy mode, hold on to the right mode, automatically you are energized and looking forward to positive affirmations and positive vibrations, within you and outside you that is what you will be spreading so the moment he sees look at looks at it as the uh, insect fear sets in and fear hampers the energy levels within the body okay so now let's explore breath aspect when it comes to these emotions okay so how are we supposed to be breathing for every single inhalation double exhalation okay so let's practice together. Inhale. Inhale some more. Hold. Hold. Exhale. Exhale some more. Exhale some more. Shrink your abdomen. Exhale completely. Navel to spine. Four levels of exhalation for every two levels of inhalation. Let's try once more. Inhale. Inhale fully. Lung, chest, abdomen completely expanded. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, shrink your neck region. Exhale some more, contract your chest. Exhale some more, abdomen shrunk. Exhale completely, navel to spine. So, one is to two. One inhalation, two exhalation. And accordingly, two means four, four means eight. So, that kind of a exhalation is the right breathing. So twice exhalation, that much of toxins is collected and out of the body. And third, entire lungs get cleansed, no residual air, you take a deep breath again. Okay, so when it is a joy mode or a passion mode, it is, you know how much you get energy when you talk to plants, you see people talking to plants, how slow and deep and very relaxing activity it becomes. Okay, your breathing is very slow and deep as you're watering, unless you're on a phone call. That can be agitating for the body. Keep the phone away just with your plants and your garden, the soil, 
water and yourself. So you want to touch the plants, talk to the plants, water the plants, your breath is going to be slow and deep and you're going to celebrate the universe, you're celebrating the Pancha Mahabhutas, the five elements with the heat, light and uh, sound mode. The flowers, the plants will start talking to you. You can feel them, okay? So that kind, their light, their pages will add on to your pages and you spread your pages to everyone you meet. Now you're angry. So where does anger come from? Where you are not satisfied with something that happened before or you need something and you're not getting it. That is when you get into an angry mode. Okay. So <clears throat> when you're in angry mode, you're and the person or the thing comes near you, automatically your breathe pa breathing pattern goes into a rapid mode and you become aware of your breathing. So uh, rapidly and you're not able to stop it. And what can you do as... Um, uh, Sakshi Chaitanya, where you are able to understand that you are different from the body you are seeing. I am in anger. Then you can become aware. And slow it down and count. What do they say when you are angry? The doctors say, I have high BP. Start. Whenever you get angry, count up to 10. And then you react. Uh, respond. Do not react immediately. Right? So that is the trick that we use, especially with children. You're angry, wait, count to 10. Your breathing will uh, slow down and when you become aware of your breathing, your anger will die away. So the mind is anchored by the breath. Okay? Similarly, you can, if you're not, if you're in touch with somebody who's got high BP, instead of telling them how to breathe, you just hold their hand and breathe slowly. Hold their brand and breathe slowly. Your pulse will connect with their pulse. And if you give instructions or rules or uh, theories of how to breathe, at that moment in their emotion, they will not. They'll just uh, say, leave me alone. I need to be alone. So instead, if you can hold their hand and say, I'm here, and you breathe slowly, that breathing pattern, cellular breathing pattern will become contagious. They will also catch hold on to that and they will start breathing normally. And you will be actually helping them. Okay. And if it is sadness, some grieving is happening, then what will you do? Well, automatically, that breathing, uh, when there is sadness, they will be like, oh my God, I should not have lost. This is a very engage to go. You've seen all this happening during COVID. I shouldn't. And everybody is sad. And the moment that is happening, they, you can't teach them. So what they should do is, they should get into a slow breathing mode and without pauses. Okay, so they should be able to, uh, you can't teach them, all you have to do is observe their sign frequently, hold their hand and breathe relaxedly. When you hold their hand and breathe immediately, that grief, they know there is somebody who can understand them. Don't tell them, I have also lost somebody, I have also dealt with a problem, that is not going to help. Because my journey is separate, their journey is separate, all you can do is agree with them, yes. It is very tough to lose somebody. It's very tough to go through a uh, bad health. It's very tough to go through this situation. Uh, uh, be compassionate, be empathy, filled with empathy and uh, guide, uh, help them with their breath. And you can't tell them, instead hold their hand, massage their back, massage their palms. We will see why in the mudra session and it will relax them. And the moment the and they will be able to take um, short breaths continuously because oxygenation is important for them. No pauses allowed, no holding of breath. In anger, holding of breath is important. Now, next is fear. When does fear manifest? When does fear manifest? When there is danger in the future. So, or either it is a real danger or it can be an imaginative danger. Okay, so that kind of a future fear causes um, <clears throat> future danger or uh, a future anxiety can cause fear in you that it will become a freeze mode. You will either want to fight the situation or you want to run away from the situation or you are stuck in the situation. You don't know and then the breathing becomes stuck. So what you should do, take a deep breath, hold your breath and breathe out. So that time, that fear, when you start observing, especially panic attack people, if you can observe your breath and work with your fear, automatically that anxiety mode will relax and you will get into a good breathing pattern. And uh, with long pauses will help you relax and conquer your fear. Now, the last aspect is your physical pain. When in pain, what do people do? Ayo, appa, they do all that, right? Shallow noises they make and... Uh, 
then they start if it is a small herd they do only the small noises if it is a, a, a big fall or a big uh, hurt or a big wound or a major accident then they start uh, wondering what uh, papa they did what uh, circumstances were there why is god punishing me they get into that mode all you can do is uh, this too shall pass is your motto divine grace is always running through me is another motto that you can hold on to and what you can do is inhale every time you inhale observe the hurt part hold and heal hold and heal exhale and relax the hurting part that is the best way inhalation go to that zone which is hurting suppose it's a pain in your knee okay let's hang let's all of us assume there's a pain in the knee so hands in gyan mudra take a deep breath in observe your knee breathe in some more observe your knee now hold and heal hold and heal your knee hold and heal gently start exhaling and relaxing your knee exhale some more relax your knee exhale some more shaking every aspect in your body relax your knee exhale completely navel to spine chest contracted clavicular region contracted and heal your knee relax your knee the knee pain goes away so this is how whenever you're inhaling observe the body part which is hurting observe then heal uh, when you are <clears throat> holding heal the body part and when you're exhaling relax the body part Okay, that way you can conquer physical pain because you are completely in swastha. With your breath, with your body, you are and that moment, that single cell. You know, these days they have the uh, stem cell concept for healing you. Stem cell, from the stem cell, they multiple the cells and heal you. What is that stem cell? That cell which was obtained when you were your birth cell. Okay, when you were born, that cell was a pure cell. When the child was born, no disease. So that cell is uh, retained. And you have stem cell banks these days. They keep it in the banks. And then when you need it, they take it, multiply the cell into multitudes. How many other cells, new cells you want? They reintroduce it, re-inject it in your body for your body to go back to its original rhythm, the original cosmic design for what it was born. Otherwise, with the external interaction, constant uh, connect with the external world, constant cages that we put ourselves within, all these cages will get shattered because that single cell has its only world is that cell. And that cell doesn't know how, uh, doesn't have the five sense organs. It doesn't interact with the world. It stays within itself when Samadhi stays that samadhi state you are multiplying to your trillions of cells and in every cell is in samadhi state automatically diseases get thrown out and you become replenished with new energy launching yourself again into cosmic design any question it's a big uh, journey it's been a beautiful journey till now we can take a break for five minutes to discuss anything that you want anybody Ma'am, I would like to know uh, how many uh, minutes for a pranayam is enough in a day to feel the energy and uh, non-tiredness in the body. Okay, but that typically in a class, ma'am. Typically in a class, they ask us to do six sets of. Yes. Actually, we're going to cover that from uh, day after. Today and tomorrow is only the uh, theory part where you understand how breath works with you. From day after, it's only practical. Practical runs to max with preparatory exercises. You don't need to do preparatory every day. With the preparatory uh, um, pranayam, uh, respiratory exercises and the proper pranayam, it will take you maximum 34 to 35 minutes. Okay? Okay, ma'am. So, yeah, then you will... Um, be able to celebrate uh, your breath <clears throat> and the new dimensions. So this is another uh, uh, screen where you understand how the emotions can harm your body. The anger weakens your liver. The grief weakens your lungs. I have tightness in your chest region. That's what we say when we are grief stricken. Then worry makes your churns your stomach. 
Okay, so every time you worry, you can't eat properly, digestive system goes for a toss. Stress again weakens your heart and the brain, fear weakens your kidney. Okay, so that is how the uh, emotions work. For the emotions, we have Sujata Ji uh, who does uh, Reiki. Uh, the psychosomatic diseases are also causes for the disease which are manifesting in the physical body. Okay, so the mind gets stressed, breathing becomes erratic, disease is set in. So you have psychogenic pain. My knee pain could be a uh, self-esteem cause. It may not be a physical uh, damage. It can even be because of a self-esteem uh, issues. Okay. My lack of pleasure can be a uh, pain in my heels. Okay. Worry is a pain on my shoulders. Okay. And um, uh, lack of friends can be a, a, a pain in my uh, hands. So these are 12 psychogenic pains. You can Google and read about them. And these can be corrected with just your breath. Okay, so yes, likewise, even with your thought processes, your uh, need for surgery can be uh, reduced. Like we have uh, psychic surgery, Reiki conducts psychic surgery for knee pain and uh, where you have grandmasters sitting together and sending you Reiki healing, even though the uh, doctors in the hospital have advised knee replacement and there are many, many miracles of such these surgeries happening in a Reiki format and getting fully healed. Okay, so that is another uh, aspect. And then you have uh, uh, trekkers can uh, try out these. Even all of us can try out these. The dog breathing where you uh, tongue out, hands on knees, belly in and out. So we will not practice it, uh, but we will just um, learn it as a theory part. So dog breathing is how the dogs breathe in summer. And they do more of it and you can see saliva dripping out of their tongues, right? So that kind of a breathing, belly in and out. And uh, <clears throat> so you, uh, they're sitting uh, on their uh, hind leg and the belly is in and out with the tongue out, salivating tongue. And that is how the body uh, stays cool in uh, during summer. That is called dog breathing. When the chest is pressed and breathing happens with the tongue out, that is rabbit breathing, which also cools your body. They don't need water at all. Do you know rabbits never drink water? So that is another way of breathing, which helps you rehydrate yourself. Okay. And then let's practice neuromuscular breathing, the 360 degrees breathing. Okay. All asanas happen on which side? Those who are into yoga. All asanas happen on which side? Start from which side? Right side, ma'am, and pranayama starts from left. Why? Any idea? Why? Uh, ma'am, because the right side is the pingala, that is the energy, uh, 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 the Surya Nadi, and the left side is Ida, that is Chandra Nadi. So we need to, uh, you know, balance out the emotions, that's why the pranayama. And we need to generate the energy. That's why the right side in asana. To my uh, knowledge, this is the logic. Wonderful. Excellent. Yeah, good one. So, uh, like we saw the body dimensions, the three, Sharira Traya, we saw. So, similarly, we can, uh, and the Pancha Poshas, we saw, uh, hiding the... Um, um, available in the three Shariras. Likewise, we can uh, trisect our body horizontally, vertically. Okay, vertically when you trisect our body, right side is your Ida na Pingala Nadi, the Surya Nadi. Left is your Ida Nadi, which is your Soma Nadi or the Chandra Nadi. And then the middle is your Shushumna Nadi. Okay, the Trikarana Shuddhi, the three Shuddhis uh, should happen for a body to be holistically delivering to this cosmic design. What are the three dimensions? Thought, word, and deed, right? Trikarana should be in thought, in word, and in deed. So you can't think something and do something else. Your uh, mind is saying, give half of your cake to your sibling and your deed is giving only quarter instead of the half, right? So that can lead to uh, imbalance in your thought process. What your thoughts said, you didn't deliver, right? So Vivekananda always told, you should do thought, word, and deed should be uh, matched together. So your right side, the Surya Nadi, like Ruchika Ji said, it is all about Kriya Shakti. The left is your Jnana Shakti and the inner, invisible Nadi, not visible to the external world and uh, hidden to the, uh, connecting at the third eye is your Shishumna Nadi, your thought. So your thought comes from the inner hidden Nadi. Ida Nadi takes care of your word and your Kriya Shakti. 
takes care of your uh, delivering to the world, which is your um, <clears throat> deed. So thought, your Ichha Shakti, thought, a word, which is your Jnana Shakti and your Kriya Shakti delivering to the uh, universe in a deed format. Okay. So these three have to be in sync at all times. <laughs> and when they are in sync, automatically you are connected to the cosmic alignment, the cosmic design. That is how the universe also runs. Okay. Now, uh, all the asanas are kriya oriented and they are delivered from the right, started off from the right side for the balancing left side. Any forward bending countered with the backward bending. Similarly, your pranayama is mind related. Your mind and your brain, your brain, your mind and your prana are all connected. They are anchored to each other. So automatically your uh, breathing starts from the left where your jnana shakti is on a high mode. Dominant mode. Okay. So now we need to get enrich our entire 360 degree lungs into a breathing, uh, fully breathing aspect. For that, since it is a Kriya, not a Pranayama as such, it's more of a uh, uh, type of uh, enhancing the physical aspect of the lungs. It is going to be started with the right side. How to do this? Use your left hand to pull your right ear. So you want to work on your right lung. Okay. So if there's a mirror image, please uh, follow my instructions. Pull your right ear with your left hand, fingers, left hand. Take your right hand, push the elbow down on the left lung. Now inhale, inhale some more, inhale some more. Feel your right lung expanding. Inhale fully, that's a count of four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale in stages, exhale. Exhale some more. Exhale some more. Exhale completely shrinking, shrinking your right lung. This will happen in four stages. Relax with normal breathing. Now let's repeat on the left side. Uh, left lung. So pull your left ear with your right hand. Left hand is pushing your lung down. Right lung down. Start inhaling. Inhaling some more. Left lung expanded. Try to do it with eyes closed. Inhale some more. Inhale fully. Left lung fully expanded. Hold. Two, three, four. Exhale. Exhale some more. Exhale some more. Exhale completely shrinking your left lung. Relax with normal breathing. Now to work on your lungs at the back. So remember during COVID times when the lungs were infected, the doctors always said, put a pillow, put your lungs chest on the pillow and breathe so that the entire lung capacity can be used. So crisscross your hands, right over left or left over right for the first round and the second round will be right left, the opposite. So push your pressure with your elbows on both the lungs in the front, right and left lung fresh. Increase, inhale, inhale some more. Feel the lungs at the back expanding. Inhale some more. Inhale fully. Hold two, three, four. Start exhaling in stages. Exhale. Exhale some more. Exhale some more. Exhale completely, shrinking your lungs at the back. Relax with normal breathing. Crisscross with the opposite hand. If it was right over left, do left over right and vice versa. Normal breathing. Four. Expanding your lungs at the back. Inhale. Inhale some more. Pressure on the front. Inhale some more. Feel the lungs at the back expanding. Inhale fully. Lungs fully expanded at the back. Hold. Two, three, four. Exhale in stages. Exhale some more. Exhale some more. Exhale completely. Shrinking your chest. Relax with normal breathing. Now let's observe. How to do 360 degree breathing <clears throat> all through we work on right left and back now all through should be working so palms on your ears middle finger touching at the back okay so middle finger is touching at the back palms on your ears smile on the face elbows middle finger touching at the back middle finger represents space tatva the space element so you're enhancing your lung space your elbows are opened out inhale inhale some more Inhale some more. Inhale fully. Observe 360 degree lung expansion. 
We can do this to three counts or six counts. <clears throat> Any questions? Anybody? <clears throat> Ma'am, how does this help? Actually, opens out all the alveoli. How much uh, capacity can your uh, uh, chest hold? And that doesn't happen in abdominal breathing. That doesn't happen in abdominal breathing, as it? No, doesn't that happen in abdominal breathing? No, your full chest expansion at the back also doesn't happen. Oh, this helps. This is one of the starter pranayamas where you uh, open up all the alveoli. Okay. Okay. So, uh, you can... Uh, yeah. Ma'am, uh, neuromuscular breathing, what you thought was the right hand on the left ear, left hand on the right ear, alternating. So, we open our sides, right? Do correct me if I'm going wrong. Okay. And then you said crisscross the hand and then breathe the similar way and then swap your hands by whichever was the dominant hand, make it a non-dominant hand. So Correct. that will open the back. But I lost you in between in 360 degrees, ma'am. Yeah, that is when you do this. Your ears, cover the palm on your ears, touch the uh, midpoint, middle finger at the back, elbows open. So this becomes 360 degrees, means the entire lungs, all round. All round is 360 degrees, right? And the breathing pattern should be the earthen pot breathing, like, right? The first, the belly has to fill in, then the middle lung, and then the upper lung, right? There is no belly filling in. The concept is uh, the lower part of the lungs. Okay, it is not the earthen pot types. Because when we breathe, the first thing is the abdomen breathing, then the lungs, lower lungs, middle lung, and, and then abdomen, the upper lung. How does abdomen breathing happen? We discussed when we started. Abdomen breathing is not filling air into your stomach. Abdomen breathing is filling air to the lower. What we do is surface breathing. We do only. Yes. Okay. When you do abdomen breathing, what you're actually doing is filling air into the lower most. The lungs are segregated into three levels. Lower lungs, middle lungs and upper lungs. So the lower lungs gets filled. Upper lungs get filled. And then the middle lungs and then the upper lungs. So the entire lung chest capacity is filled. And it pushes the diaphragm down, pushes the abdomen out. Okay? Yes. Uh, so, ma'am, typically in any pranayam, that should be the process, right? Correct, correct. Uh, so, so what we happens, have to deep breathe in. Yes, deep breathe. It becomes a muscle memory after some time. You don't have to make effort. If you do pranayama on a daily basis for 21 days, even if you are doing uh, any other activity, your breathing will be complete and full because that is a message sent to your um, every cell in the body on how to breathe. Breathe, hold, breathe, release. Breathe, hold and inhale, hold and exhale. Inhale, that will take care. And that too, how do you inhale? Inhale fully. Hold, heal, exhale completely. So fully is filling it fully. Exhale completely means throwing out entirely. So the words also matter, the affirmations matter, the instructions matter. What you're telling at a muscle level and they will follow to the pie, to the word. Okay. So you are, lungs are capable of filling six liters. The volume is six liters. And if you can open out all the, what are the uh, sacs in your uh, lungs called where exchange of gases happen? The alveoli, air sacs. That alveoli, if you spread it out, it can fill an entire tennis court. Can you imagine a tennis court and every lung having that many alveoli? Are you using them all? Just think about it. So that kind of a uh, miracle is happening every with every single breath. Okay. So now we also learned already, we've been learning continuously that Pranena bhadhyate manasa, manasa bhadhyate pranaha. So the prana controls the mind, the mind controls the prana. Both ways they get affected. Okay. <clears throat> and directly or indirectly in throughout the body. Okay. 
but that is the adhi and then it manifests in the body as vyadi okay so it becomes very important on how your thoughts are chosen and you have to choose and become aware so first become aware of your thoughts put them on a waiting stool on a queue and prioritize your thoughts the most important you will mind will automatically sort it it will deliver the most important and then it will um, uh, ignore the least important so similarly, even in a doctor's uh, clinic, what happens? All of you will sit and then the doc, uh, receptionist says, doctor is in a major surgery, he will get delayed by two hours. Guess what will happen? All those who will wait and have small minor ailments, they say, okay, I'll come some other day and see. So all those thoughts will leave. Those thoughts which are not relevant or not important, not significant and very minor, the, um, they or oh, immediately choose to leave only the priority or uh, they uh, immediately to be strategically uh, to be delivered immediately those will re uh, remain and they will be delivered and they will find their answers right so or some will go search of others so what vibrations you catch in your thoughts what you need to deliver and how it is delivered through you all comes from your thought process what is the first rule swastha stay within your self if required, emerge to deliver. If required, emerge to do seva. Everything will become seva after that. Even to yourself. Giving yourself water is becoming seva. Need not be to another soul. Even So what has happened? You have detached yourself from your body, from your mind. You are observing. You are becoming a Sakshi Chaitanya where you are observing your body or doing seva to it. And then are you observing? Am I depending? Am I doing seva only to myself? Then you do seva to others. So you stay within yourself. When you come out of it, see what seva you are doing, to whom you are doing, to which body, which mind you are doing and go back to the swastha as soon as possible. My journey is to stay within the self like my hand is obeying me. And then otherwise, if there is a lack in the Trikarana Shuddhi, automatically Vyadi will start. When there is, because the thought is coming from where? From para, atma, paramatma. Atma is yours. Paramatma is beyond you. That Paramatma is residing within you in the Sarvagna Bija format. When that from there only the Vak is coming. So Para Pashyanti, uh, you are all chanting Lalta Sasanamam. I know in the Australia zone. So you know how the Vak emerges. So Para mode, then you have Pashyanti, Madhyama, Pashyanti, Vaikari mode. In the Vak mode, from Para what has emerged should be delivered. That thought from the Paramatma has come. Beyond you has come and that has to be delivered and in word format and kriya format. If there is a deviation, Vyadi will manifest. So the choice of thoughts, choice of words and your deliverance to the universe is very important. Okay. So everything begins in the mind and ends in the mind. Only when you open your eyes, this world is there. If you're closed and if you're doing meditation or samadhi, this world does not exist. No serials, no blood pressure, no um, uh, dangerous animals, animals running around you. Nothing is visible. You are in your own zone and you're on a safe zone, on a healthy mode. Okay. So now that we have uh, prana in it is uh, <clears throat> the breath. When it is in the breathing pattern, it is the rajasic aspect, the uh, action mode. And when it is conquered in your eyebrow center, the manas, the mind gets activated and then the eyebrow center opens up. The sattvic mode is what you will attain. So from rajasic, the prana, the heart center to the manas in the eyebrow center, the third eye opens up. You are the sun and the moon like our Ruchika ji said your Eda Nadi Pingala Nadi your uh, right eye is your sun your left eye is the moon the middle eye the mid eye the midpoint or the third eye is your fire and these three when they are together and in sync they open up newer dimensions within you okay and you are totally interconnected not just with yourself but with the universe around you which is but a dimension of your yourself at either a superior level or at a inferior different dimensions they are all energy centers and they are all vibing with you they are there for a reason to push you into higher dimensions to become or to become aware of the divine within to awaken the divine uh, within you okay now having done this let us explore uh, the uh, now that we know Now that we know that um, prana, 
prana is what is uh, keeping us um, uh, connected with our mind <clears throat> let's explore the first two preparatory pranayamas are over let's get into the mainline pranayama let's start with bhastrika what does bhastrika do we are going to do bhastrika from the different from the regular uh, youtube channels and this bhastrika will help clear blocks okay the first two na uh, pranayamas are for removing blocks in your nadis what are nadis anybody energy channels ma'am wonderful what is what do you mean by energy channels ma'am where the different parts uh, it's like a mini cosmos in ourselves where like the universe interacts in its own form the similar way we have the interaction within us around us it is not necessarily within the body it is around us okay sudhara ji you were saying something you want to yeah, add the interaction between the two nadis we believe that they are the packet of energy those are the points which give energy to our body wonderful anybody else wants to add to it where the prana flows where the prana where exactly so pranic energy are traveling through invisible channels within our body okay these channels are uh, called nadis where the pranic energy we saw no the rajasic aspect which goes through the channels uh, helping uh, the exchange of gases uh, in, uh, in in uh, injecting the uh, uh, energy and infusing energy into every cell collecting the toxins and throwing it out so any block it can be your physical block because of wrong food or vata or air block or it can be your know, mental block it can be a emotional block social block or even a spiritual block any of these blocks are available in the nadis they get cleansed with or removed using bhastrika pranayam okay now coming to the uh, uh, nadis is it How different nadis? from the arteries veins and capillaries absolutely yeah these are and all so invisible it, okay yeah. these are all in the scriptures they carry the pranic energy you cannot see the pranic energy you have physical blood flowing so this is a subtler and even more um, uh, what do you invisible uh, aspect in the body which is carrying the pranic energy and somebody uh, passes or dies we say atma has left nobody has seen the atma but there has been experiments you know when a person is in the final moments they put him in a complete glass case and uh, waited for the prana to leave and they have observed that there is a crack in the glass case when the uh, prana leaves the body and the uh, person dies so the uh, no something is leaving the body which is not invisible to the human eye so that is why uh, we are all the shiva tatvas and uh, the shakti is the ikara so if the prana is infused by shakti tatva the kinetic the uh, if the prana leaves the body uh, the desires you know if they uh, leaves the body then this becomes a shava the body becomes a shava the corpus or if the uh, body leaves and the uh, prana continues like people who commit suicide the prana remains and it becomes a preta okay so that is how it is uh, defined in the scriptures so both have so when you and again jeevan mukta who is a rishi when they are living so if you have desires and you uh, die with desires what happens is uh, you are um, uh, the desires continue and you take a new form and repeat your journey here if there is no desire even when you are alive then you become a jeevan mukta a samadhi state even moksha seeking liberation is also a desire that is why they say you should have no desire including your uh, want for liberation or moksha mumukshatva so that is how uh, the uh, scriptures define it so even don't desire anything just be just be is even what uh, ramkrishna paramahamsa did what ramana marishi did just be summa ir or whatever they say uh, and who are my for who is coming for who is this happening for who is um, who is feeling that pain if you get on to that mode automatically all your uh, desires will leave you because there will be nothing to desire for okay now how many nadis are there in the body 72000 ma'am okay so each scripture 72 lakh 72 lakh 72000 there's so many each scripture uh, supports a different count okay but let's see the actual count here 
you have 72 crore, 72 lakhs, 10,201 nadis. That is how it is. And the maths is also given. This is as per Kathopanishad. So the maths is 100 nadis, one nadis emerge from your Atma center, heart center. Okay, so that is why we give gifts. Do you have you ever asked, why do I give one rupee extra? I can just give 100. Why do I give 101, 501? Because they all represent these 101 nadis from the heart. From each of the 101, 100 emerges. And from each of the 100, 72,000 comes out. So that is how 72,000 is given. In Hatha Yoga Pradipika, those who are deep into yoga, their gurus will be guided, guided by this um, scripture known as Hatha Yoga Pradipika, which says 72,000 nadis are prevalent. Shiva Samhita says 3,50,000 nadis. Chandogya Upanishad says 101. And Katha Upanishad gives the map like um, 101. For every 101, there is 100. So 101 into 100. Then for every 100, there is 72,000. So 101 into uh, 100 into 72,000, 72 crore, 72 lakhs. Adding all the 101 and 100, uh, uh, you get 10,201. So uh, what? how does the other scriptures differ? Because these, all these nadis, when from the heart center, they all again come to merge together. So when two nadis meet, they are known as sandhis. When three nadis meet, they are known as marma points. So all of you have heard of marma therapy, varma therapy, acupressure. These are points in the body where three nadis meet and they can release the blocks. Okay, we are going to do the same removal of blocks using pranayama. The best part is they merge again to at the navel center. Then they come and uh, at the chakra centers in your body. And then they become the three important nadis and merge at the eyebrow center and from there there's a single nadi going up and branching into sahasrara chakra okay so all the nadis from the body starting from emerging from the heart they again merge together and culminate at the eyebrow center blossom into a, a thousand petal lotus in your sahasrara chakra so the crown so just a simple tap here will help you relax any blocks in any of the nadis and release any stress in your body. So now let's let's explore uh, Bastrika Pranayama and conclude the session today. Okay. So let's Ma'am, what is together. when two nadi meet? When two nadi meet, what is it called? Sandhi. They are known as Sandhi. 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 Sandhi and three nadis is Marma. Marma. <clears throat> Marma therapy would have heard, no? Chiropractors follow that. Okay. So... Let's uh, yes. do Vastrika Pranayam. Again, four stages like your neuromuscular. So first stage is your uh, forceful left nostril breathing. Then stage uh, relax, normal breathing. Then second stage, right nostril, forceful inhalation, forceful exhalation, relax. Then alternate nostril, forceful exhalation. Conclude with... Um, conclude with uh, both nostrils together. So first left only, right only, alternate nostril and then both nostrils together. How do you do it? Left hand in Gyan Mudra, right hand in Pranayama Mudra, index finger, middle finger. The little are both bending to the base of your thumb. Okay. So uh, some people put it in the um, eyebrow center. Some people hold it here. It can be uh, agar, uh, Agra or here. Um, on top, okay, Ma, <clears throat> Udara or Agra. Uh, so here uh, you hold it, it will open up. These are your throat points. So it will open up the throat and uh, expanded lungs also will happen with the pressure here. Or you can hold it here to activate your uh, Agnya Chakra. This you can do only if you are initiated by your guru or somebody has taught you. Others can uh, gently hold it at the base of the thumb. This is also a disease-free mudra, Shunya Vayu mudra. Also, because it is putting pressure on the throat uh, points in the uh, reflexology system, your throat enhances to take in more breath. Okay. Close your right nostril with your thumb. Okay. Normal breathing. Close your night. Forceful inhalation, forceful exhalation only from the left nostrils. Okay. Let's start together. Let's do only 10 counters today because you're doing it for the first time. Let's start together. Forceful inhalation, forceful exhalation. Relax with normal breathing. First stage done. Second stage, 
left side close with your ring finger okay now forceful inhalation forceful exhalation from your right nostril let's do it together Ten counter relax normal breathing breathe in breathe out now alternate nostrils same ten counter but one count will be inhale forcefully through left inhale exhale through right inhale forcefully through right exhale forcefully through left that is one full count both sides together one count like that ten counts forceful inhalation forceful exhalation let's start together inhale forcefully through the left exhale through the right Five over. Ten over. Relax with normal breathing. Now both hands in Gyan Mudra. Forceful inhalation, forceful exhalation through both nostrils together. Normal breathing with Bhastika. Control with normal breathing. Observe your breath. Hold your breath. Relax your breath. Observe. Inhale. Hold and heal. Exhale and relax. Inhale and observe your nodies. Hold and heal your nodies. Exhale and relax your nodies. Continue with normal breathing. Rub your palms. Cup your face. Open your eyes. Into your palm. Karamadhyaya. Karamuledu. Circulate. Recirculate the energy. Recycle your energy within your body. And relax. Now turn your videos on. Observe the nadis fully healed. Any questions? Any feedback? I know I'm fast. So other than that, any other feedback? Those have joined for the first time, please unmute yourself. Session was very interesting, ma'am. Even at the middle, I laughed, till, laughed, laughed a lot, ma'am. Ma'am, about the mountain when you go and when there's no energy, then suddenly a snake appears. Then I laughed a lot, ma'am. That was very energizing for me. The session was. Wonderful. Thank Excellent. you very much, ma'am. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else wants to add? Ma'am, it was a very informative session. Ruchika here, ma'am. Namaste. It was a very informative session, except there was some range problem, ma'am, where we were losing you in parts, like, you know, 50 to 60 seconds were clear and 10 seconds was a drop. Then 50 seconds was clear and 10 seconds was a drop. Throughout? So, or... otherwise it was... A... No, only sometimes, not oh. complete, only not throughout. Sometimes for it... me, it came very frequently, very frequently, though I'm sitting in a Wi-Fi range in a full uh, capacity. I don't know, but, but uh, it was happening very frequently. That's why I had to keep on asking you to repeat, ma'am. Okay, that's okay. It's a pleasure. It's good for the others also. Yeah. Thank you, Ashwini ji. Thank you, Ruchika ji. Okay, so we'll uh, continue. Ma'am, one more thing. This pranayama mantra that you had, uh, you know, taught the first shloka, mm. uh, it should be chanted before starting our pranayama practice. Yeah. No, no, not necessary. You can chant any shloka which you are comfortable with. Okay. Mama, I have a question, question I had. Uh, may I ask? Please Hello. Yes, yeah. So um, uh, earlier, uh, I was not doing uh, abdominal breathing. And when I became aware of it, then I started practicing. And now I'm in the habit of doing abdominal breathing, even 
uh, you know as a part of my reflex breathing now mm-hmm. at during pranayam time we introduce a pause uh, a, between the inhalation and the exhalation and also after the exhalation mm-hmm. so should those pauses be there as a part of the regular reflex breathing that you do or um, is is this just inhale exhale which happens during reflex breathing okay reflex breathing automatic breathing it's perfectly all right uh, there need not be any pause it can happen on its own it's perfectly all right because you are introducing uh, at a subconscious level whatever pranayama you are doing automatically in a subconscious level it is happening but um, uh, if it is a frequent pause and if it is tampering your energy supply to the cells then you have to uh, uh, work on your breathing pattern again is that answering your question okay. so i need not introduce the pause right i need not practice to have a pause because sometimes they say that during the pauses especially between inhalation and exhalation it ensures that the uh, exchange of gases happens completely which is why that pause helps so i um, i need not like how i had practiced earlier like long back getting into the abdominal breathing or re Uh, uh adapting to abdominal breathing from wrong breathing we don't have to do that to introduce the pauses in our reflex breathing correct you don't have to introduce it will take care on its own it will build it into okay. it okay okay yeah if you are consciously breathing perfectly all right if you are able to consciously breathe throughout especially when you are very confident in a subject you will be talking at the same time you will be able to manipulate your breath observe your breath work with your breath so that is the way uh, you uh, you will slowly uh, detach from the content detach from the body observe your words observe your body observe your body language so all this will get you become more and more evolved into the event itself and then you are supposed to drop the event and start another event so that is how dimensions open up within you okay yeah Ma'am, just a curiosity thing. Uh, which are the good books? Because I have a couple of Pradayam books by Bihar School of Yoga and I B K S Iyengar, but uh, they do not follow this kind of three sixty degrees or uh, Ujjayi thing or what you taught this one. Uh, so, which are the good books for the reference of this uh, particular technique of the? The knowledge. The whatever you seek, knowledge uh, manifests itself. I- okay what happens is uh, when knowledge manifests itself um they all they all got built like that even in my sessions i have also been uh, uh, i have found gurus in many ways um uh, now for the bastika variety that i do we learnt it from bharti yog samsthan jay shri ji um, uh, who initiated us into that path taught us then there are other pranayam which ramdev baba ji uh, taught through his patanjali yoga and then bk zayangar and his books so all these are for, brought together and prashant ji taught that neuromuscular breathing what we are doing is only bringing it all together and uh, since they fell into a pattern they fell into a logic this morning that double breathing which i started off with this morning i learned from the uh, kriya yoga taught by paramahamsa yogananda so all these are uh, revealing itself and we gradually can build it into our system so ultimately listen to your body listen to your mind is the thumb rule what has to be uh, heard by you will be revealed to you what has to be experimented by you what has to be um, experienced by you will be revealed to you by the guru and the guru is not somebody outside the guru is the one see if you can whatever you hear the entire thing you won't be uh, able to recall but snippets of it critical what is relevant to you you would have grasped fully and you will reveal it to yourself and that journey is what is the uh, real revelation moment for you awakening the divine touching base with your own self so whichever is going to enable you into that mode is what you have to take and leave the rest out not get into any cage again it's all a cage so you take what is uh, relevant and even this session they i have uh, um, repeating it on my platform if uh, sanchita ji says okay i will share the group link here and uh, people can join the whatsapp group uh, we can um, <clears throat> yes sanchita ji yes sure can 
Sure. Okay. okay. So the the sessions are repeated, so you can join the WhatsApp group. And uh, every month, these sessions, uh, you have one mudra session. Alternatively, the next month, it will be the pranayama session. And you can practice and then leave the group whenever you feel you've got uh, received uh, the uh, knowledge that you needed, what you were seeking. And once you feel comfortable, you can move on. And new knowledge... You one, two more questions. Enough. Yes. One, two more questions. I know I'm taking a lot of time, but uh, two more questions. Mm -hmm. I'm always in a fix. Um, because they say if you breathe longer, deeper, the age increases. Likewise, tortoise, like elephant, who stay for longer. So they uh, their breath is like, uh, you know, four to five breaths in a minute, two breaths yeah, that... a minute, tortoise. Yeah. So now when we are doing kapal bhati is not a pranayam, it's a kriya. It's a uh, kriya, cleansing kriya. But uh, when we do this uh, bhastrika, we are doing it fast. So how do we connect this fast, this speed, with the slow thing? No, there is no fast or slow that I'll cover tomorrow. Everything is listened to your body. So the speed comes from either you can do in a slow pace uh, or madhyama or in um, uh, vega, the very fast pace. Okay. So um, atira. Okay. So atita also you can do. So listen to your body, which your body aids. Depending on the body condition, according always better to do in uh, the uh, low speed, which is comfortable. Any any body will listen and promote it. By the end of the session, you can. So first row rounds you do in uh, slow pace, then you go to a um, madhyama space, and then try tibra. So if you have five rounds, two. No, rounds of... the uh, the question is not about the speed. The question is I can do at the speed. That's not the thing, but. Uh... How uh, because now see in a minute I'm taking 30 breaths when well, naturally I am taking 13 to 14 breaths a minute. Here, uh, when I'm doing Bhastrika or Kapal Bhati, I end up in taking maybe 40 to 80 breaths in a minute. So I'm actually increasing my frequency of breath in that minute. So, how do that contribute to the longevity where the Rishis and uh, all the seers? want uh, to, you know, get onto a phase where they're breathing the base minimum. Uh, frequency is base minimum. So I, my question is that. No. I hope I made my question very clear or should I reframe it? No, no, no. I Tomorrow it is completely covered because of lack of time I'm not going to it. There is a table no with problem, all the animals and the breath count. And we are also exploring how 15 breaths, uh, the counter that you explained seven, uh, in a day, the um, uh, 12,600 breaths, 10, 21,600 breaths, 10,800 solar breaths, 10,800 lunar breaths, how they are actually can, should be reduced where to bring it to one breath per minute or two breaths per minute or uh, as your body can support, that will be covered in tomorrow's session. How many seconds you hold a breath uh, elaborately. But you can't do it uh, on a daily basis unless you are a Rishi or a Muni. You can only do it within the time you sit for Pranayama. You can't directly go into it because you have been involved in Vyavaharika Loka. In this uh, transactionary world, Vyavaharika Loka, the emotions have gone for a toss. Your physical and your multitasking has played a major role leading to some blocks. Uh, lack of eating on time or pushing your hunger pangs or uh, water thirst pangs. Uh, to the last minute, all these will work against you and uh, create blocks. So every time you sit for pranayam, pan, the blocks have to be removed and gradually guide your body into uh, one breath or two breaths a minute. You can do maximum about uh, half an hour of uh, that kind of a pranayam in a day. If you sit, okay, so the table and the elaborate details are shared in tomorrow's session. What you should do, what speed you should do, we will, uh, it will be a fast paced session again because the content is fast. We will need six days to explain if I go on slow, slow pace. Uh, none of you or not all of you will have that kind of a time at your disposal. All of us are caught up in something or the other. So that is why I make it two days, a lot of content. So you can, at your leisure, you can attend half an hour today, half an hour in the next month, half an hour in the next month and spread the knowledge uh, through the time. Okay. So that's how it is. Thank you Namaste, so much, ma'am. Ma Namaste. Yeah, madam, you. namaste. Yes. Uh, uh, this is Grisha. Uh, yeah. Madam, really it is an uh, informative class. And uh, yeah. daily we are practicing yoga in uh, Patanjali Yoga Shikshana Samiti with others also. Uh, and we do daily for 
a pranayama for 10 minutes to 15 minutes. But um, after listening to this class, uh, really, I understand so many extra knowledge about this pranayama, really. And uh, we conclude, uh, you synchronize some uh, the concepts uh, of uh, behind this scientifically and also spiritually, we have synchronized some ideas. Madam. Really, it is uh, informative and uh, excellent class. Uh, as far as my knowledge is concerned, really, we do pranayama, but uh, you told the new thing that is 360 degree uh, yeah. uh, pranayama. Yes. Uh, we are concentrating only about this uh, uh, abdominal breathing and also uh, what is thoracic region and also we only. But uh, see, in a 360 degree breathing, you see, uh, we observe the breathing from back of the uh, from back also. Yeah. Back. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, from back. Yeah. Uh, really, it is a yeah. very excellent class. And uh, once again, pranam to you, madam. Thank you. Thank you to Sanchita ji who uh, initiated this all and provided the platform for all of you to join. Yeah. I'll conclude with the shloka, neck and back straight, elbows relaxed, shoulders relaxed. Join your palms above your head, Agnya Chakra, Anahata Chakra, normal breathing, eyes gently closed. Breathe in, breathe out. Om Asatoma Sadgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya. Om Shanti, 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Hari Om. Continue with eyes closed. Rub your palms. Cup your face. Open your eyes into your palm. Karamadhyaya Karamuledu. Shri Guru Pyonam. Thank you. Thank you, Manu Lord. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, you Madhi.